Okay, so I have my structural sketch here uh, inspired by these, the combination of these two Pokemon, which are very weird. I know where the head will be. I know the direction of the head, where there'll be some sort of muzzle, maybe some sort of tusks, some sort of ridge on the top of the head inspired by this. Probably some sort of bushy eyebrow as well. You know, that might look nice. Um, then I have the spine, and along the spine, I have to know that there's a rib cage, a collarbone, shoulder joints, how wide those shoulders are, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, and kind of flippers or hands, a pelvis, and then I could even design what these back legs would be, right? But I kind of like the idea that it's all gonna be covered by fur. But I could use this as inspiration for that, right? And then I have to think, okay, if I'm gonna use minimum five major references to build this, to make it my own transformed creation, right? I definitely don't wanna be sued by Pokemon designers. Then what real world sources can I look to? And they don't need to be all animals, right? But they do need to be things in the real world that there are high resolution photos of. So things like flowers, things like food, and things like animals are gonna work. So I'm thinking, okay, walrus makes sense for the tusks. Bison makes sense for like all the crazy fur. Maybe a seal for these hands, probably actually a sea lion. They're flippers. And that's pretty similar to um, walruses. Maybe a boar for the snout. And then white, or white orchids for maybe some of these. This looks like a flower to me. You know, some of these details. So what do I have to do? I can open up my assignment to folder and I can create a references folder. Right. I'm going to drag that off to the edge and I'm going to open up Chrome. And I'm immediately going to start image searches. And we're a little used to this now. And maybe I look for walrus first. Because what is the focal point of any creature? Think of any like creature that appears in a movie. Like a Godzilla movie, a Star Wars movie. The focal point is always going to be the head. you got to identify what the head is. And the, the harder it is to identify the head, the more alien that creature seems, right? So you can have really strange heads, but you still need some focal point that we can identify as like the focal point, the center, the head. So that's what I'm going to start with. And it's really important that I just don't find the best photo of a walrus head possible. It's really important that I keep this angle in mind, right? that needs to look this way, down and to the left. Now, if it's down and to the right, I can always flip it. I also need to make sure that it's high enough resolution, just like our landscape. So I'm going, before I look at anything, I'm gonna to go to tools, I'm gonna to go to size, and I'm gonna say large, but then large isn't large enough always. It needs to be around 2000 by 2000 pixels. So this one's big enough, but he's looking up. This one's not quite big enough. So you're seeing the pixel counts. All I need is that head position. So this one has some potential. It's really close to 2000. So let's see. So I'm going to open that, right click. Some of us still need practice this right click and open link in new tab right and then i go to that tab and then i right click and i say open image in new tab and then i can see the full size yeah it's all right i'll save it to references but i'm hoping for something better then i can close these
And ideally, I don't want just the head. I want the head connected to a spine that I can use. And who knows, I might need it with a different type of animal. It's an art class. We can be creative. As you can see, there's no shortage of options. It's just you have to have your diligence. Ah, oh, this one looks good. Now, it's really important. I'm not looking for an image that is a whole body that then I can just paste wings to and Put different feet on, right? That's the same as taking one big landscape and just putting trees in it and calling it transformed. No, I'm just looking for that one section, that head structure. And this one, that is nice quality, high resolution. Notice it's in sharp focus. It starts to blur out here, but I'm going to have other elements. I'm going to have the fur and other elements there. So I'm putting that over. I'm going to say, okay, that's something I I'm feeling more confident with. This maybe can help me with the transition of the neck. And then last one, and I try to get three for each. This is really good for these tusks, right? So let's see how it looks. Open image, a new tab. Yeah, those are pretty great. But it's not the position of the head I want, right? And that's okay. Sometimes it's good to look at the different options and just see, but you see this one's too tiny. So this is what you need to avoid. <laughs> no way that resolution works because when you print it, it will look like this. Right. So make sure you're only pulling high resolution around 2000 by 2000 pixels over. Okay, good, got that. Next, let's Let's go right for the body. So I'm going to go right to the bison or buffalo, my favorite animals, because they can be so messy <laughs> with their fur. I like this one, but it might not be big enough. Let's see. Oh, this one's gorgeous. And it's Yellowstone National Park. It might even be that this image, if it was taken by the staff, Probably wasn't. It looks like it's too small. Ah, hate, hate tags that are inaccurate. Um, but if it if it were, and this one looks promising. If it's paid for by staff at a federally, you know, protected site like a national park, then it could potentially be public domain anyway. But look at that rib cage. It's glorious. That pelvis. So there's something here. I don't know if it's the end all be all. This one I like the angle a lot better. I need to keep looking. That's just not big enough. Remember, it should fill the screen and more to be high enough resolution. This one's great. So, how can you not love these animals? Oh, that's such a shame. This is one of those drawbacks, right? So what happened was, this is huge resolution, but they took a photo and then they, they actually used a, a vector algorithm to enlarge it and keep it clean. But what does that do? When you actually look at it, it's just lots of little soft edge cut out kind of paint strokes. So if I use this alongside some of my photos, 
right, you'll see that the textures do not match. You won't have believability. Just like if I use a filter like this over the top of my whole landscape, it actually takes away the believability of the landscape. But it's a darn shame. I like his expression. Now that's why <laughs> we should all learn how to take pictures sometimes. <laughs> Use the cameras ourselves. But it's not reasonable to take a weekend trip to Yellowstone. And get this. Okay, and I'm getting three of each, right? Because I'm not sure what I'll use. So I need one more bison for that rib cage and, and preferably like the back pelvis. And I want it at a three quarter angle if at all possible. So that's why I make a big deal in your sketches that you need to have the anatomy in there. You need to know where the spine is and what it's doing so that you know what angles to look for for that anatomy in your reference. Oh, this one's kind of interesting. How small. Nothing like watching tutorial videos of people just doing image searches. It's riveting stuff. Ah, this one looks good. Let's hope. Nope, not going to be good. Broken tag. Now this albino one, ah, that's too small. That could be interesting. So what I do like about doing image searches is it forces you to, to see things that you maybe didn't consider from before. And it's making me think, well, this is maybe too limited a search criteria. Like in this reference here, let's see. Yeah, I like that. So I'm thinking maybe water buffalo will give me that real shaggy look. All of these guys look too camera ready. See, what's the shaggiest one? There we go. Remember, it's always only searching for large, but I still need larger than large for a lot of these. Oh, what are the names of the dogs that are just like really, really shaggy? Sheep dogs, but then there's the other, there's like, sheep, sheep dog might be good. Let's see. The ones that look like mops, like this one. What kind of dog is that? Hungarian Puli. That's what I want. All right, here we go. So now I need something big enough, but that's going to be beautiful. That's going to give me a lot to work with. And if it's a show dog, it's going to be a nice, easy reference to use. I just need them 2,000 by 2,000 if I can get them. As close to that as possible. And then I might just look up mops. 